on tap, Robert the Bruce. Hi, I'm James Knott and this is your Better Beer Authority. Today we are doing a blind tasting of Robert the Bruce Scottish Ale from Three Floyds Brewing. The brewery is founded in Hammond, Indiana but moved to Munster in 2000. Robert the Bruce is the highest rated Scottish Ale on both RateBeer.com and BeerAdvocate.com. The brewery describes it as a malt lover's delight. It measures 7.0% ABV and 30 IBUs. Look for a full-bodied beer with roasted and caramel notes. Most likely you will drink this beer out of a pint glass, but many times Scottish ales are consumed in a thistle glass, which is the same shape as Scotland's national flower. Now it's close to St. Patrick's Day, but this is absolutely not a St. Patrick's Day episode. Not at all. We are not celebrating our Irish heritage at all. Ryan, what kind of flavors are you pulling out of this beer? Uh, Flavor-wise, I'm getting a lot of, um, you know, kind of sweet, uh, caramely character, um, kind of overlaying the uh, kind of bready, uh, bready malt character that I'm getting out of that. Okay. Joby, what kind of beer drinker would drink a beer like this, do you think? James, this... Um I could see somebody that is kind of new into the craft beer scene going for this. Um, with it not being overly hopped and, and pretty smooth, pretty easy drinking, that would appeal to somebody that's coming coming into the scene. Um, Do you think that would have appealed to you when you first started? Absolutely. I think I would have probably been all over this beer three years ago. Um, and it's still not that bad. I mean, if you're if I'm in for something like this. Um, again, it's it's not overly hopped. It's, it's well balanced and it's easy drinking. So... Because of that, I wouldn't mind handing this to somebody that's uh, coming into the craft beer scene and say, hey, give me something other than a BMC. Yeah. Uh, is there any, like, big notable hop presence in this, or how would you describe the beer? I, I would say the hops is non-existent. Uh, I, get, I get in the smell some coffee, and then the same in the flavor, that, you know, coffee, kind of that caramely maltiness, like Ryan said. Um, but, you know... Even for, uh, assuming what is a, a Scottish style ale, I would expect a little bit of hops in some, uh, and, and maybe a little bit more flavor. Uh, overall, it, it's, it's a decent drinking beer. Okay. Now, in the interest of full disclosure, two disclosures, actually. Kevin brought the beer, so he actually knows what it is. Number two, our glasses are a little low, and that's because we had some di technical difficulties and we are reshooting. Oops. <laughs> but we should so sound very well more well rehearsed. I don't know if that's a good phrase. <laughs> Ryan? <laughs> yes. Uh, give us like your rating and your big picture on this one. Uh, I'm at a six. Um, uh, I think we had kind of decided that this was a, a, a Scottish ale. Um, and for me, uh, that's not really a style that I, that I necessarily go for. Um, a lot of the kind of sweet, caramely um, character that you get out of those beers just doesn't really doesn't doesn't really do it for me. Yeah. Um, you know, if I'm looking for uh, a beer that's a little more malt forward, I'm usually looking for something that's um, malt forward more on the roasty end, um, as opposed to the kind of the the sweeter um, sort of caramel character. Yeah. Um, so I'm at a I'm at a six on this one. Joby, what's your rating, and how does this compare to other Scottish ales? Well, James, I'm going to start off with my rating. I'm going to uh, be in line with Ryan with a six. Uh, compared to other Scottish ales, this one isn't um, as Scottish or scotchy, I guess I should say, as others. Um, others are more, you know, really boozy, really scotchy, but this one's very blended, so it's got very high drinkability. Um, the, the six rating, I'm going to go with because you know it reminds me of a six man in basketball he's not going to make the starting five he's going to be the first one off the bench but again it's not going to be my you know the premier the premier starting five the uh the highlight players but i don't mind having this uh in the the joey johnston of the high school team. you know if he has to put up a shot he can <laughs> you know so you can that, take a foul i uh, take a charge with the best of them hey that's all right i got cut so whatever <laughs> I ain't bitter. <laughs> Kevin, what's your rating? Well, I'm going to go with a six as well. Okay. I, I know it, uh, sometimes we have a little disagreement on this, but this is one I think we all, all agree. 
Uh, it's drinkable. Uh, it, not a ton to stand out amongst the crowd. Uh, it, since Joby's going with uh, sort of a sports analogies, we, we can call it an uh, on-deck beer. If I'm going to go an Imperial Stout or you know something sort of that, that big bottle that's been in your collection, mm -hmm. you know, bring it out and uh, you need something to back it up. And I think this would be a good backup to it com in comparison to that style. This will seem a little bit lighter, a little more sessionable. Um, but but again, I think that that's a good position for it. So uh, good beer. I uh, just I think that there's a little bit higher in the same category. You know, I think like a Founder's Dirty Bastard or something. Uh, you know, again like that and. and I know there's also ones where they've taken the style and then they, they barrel age it to add a little more complexity. So okay. you know, in that context, I, when we find out, I'm, I'm, I believe that this has also been barrel aged to, to add complexity, but probably a little more difficult to come by. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I will reveal the beer. It is Robert the Bruce from the Three Flights Brewing Company. Uh, pass it on down. And... Uh, so it seems to me like the ratings, they are kind of biased by the fact that you guys just aren't really a big fan of Scottish ales. Is it fair to the beer? Because this is a pretty highly rated Scottish ale. So is it fair to the beer to rate it by style or by personal preference? Usually we go personal preference. Yeah, and, and I'll answer that first, James. I mean, this show has all been, all, always been about personal preference. We've never taken the style of beer and said, hey, you know, this is the best Scottish ale I've ever had. Um, because of that, I'm going to rank it 9 or 10. You know, it's always been about our drinkability, our personal preference to the beer. So, you know, where our rating might be lower, um, for the style, it might be excellent. So, when, Ryan, when someone's looking at that rating, how should they, they take that? The ratings that we gave them? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that that we all did did kind of give the caveat that that this is what it is is to me, and this is why. Um, and and like I said, for me, the the Scottish style isn't one that I that I go and I seek out, and and that kind of falls in line with the rating I gave it. Um, that being said, I mean the beer was um, you know very well balanced um, in terms of in terms of being a well put together, good drinkable beer, um, and I think it is well done. It's just for me, you know, it's not it's not necessarily what I what I seek out. Um, and I think that the as Joby was saying, the the BBA has always kind of had um, ratings based on on what people you know think personally. And I know you know going through some of the older stuff, there's some people that I feel cut my my tastes are more in line with than. Than others, and I think that's one of the values of having um, people give personal personal ratings based on what they enjoy and, and how the beer speaks to them, rather than you know trying to get really into the Kevin. style. Yeah, I'd follow that up to say you know of of this style, I think the best out there would be an eight. But if you think about stouts, you think about porters. Again, this style. Uh, Beer's been pushed so far in a, in a great direction. You could take any of those and take your favorite and then barrel age it and, and add some complexity to it, and you'd probably like it more. You know, so take your favorite stout. Would you rather have be imperial and ba barrel aged? And the same with this. Take this beer, you know, and I'm sure, I'm sure Three Floyds has a version out there where they've barrel aged it to add another layer of complexity that's that much higher than this. Probably a little more alcohol, a little more complexity. Probably it's one of those, you know, as it warms up, would change a little bit more than this will. And so I, I think that's just the upside uh, to, the, to the craft beer and uh, how creative everyone's gotten as far as brewing beer today. Mm -hmm. So, Ryan? And on the, on the bottle it does say, uh, this ale will bring a smile to any malt lover's lips. And, and while I'm not frowning, I wouldn't necessarily call my, my palate uh, that, that of a malt lover. Um, so while the, you know, like we were saying, it's, it's a good beer and it's enjoyable. Well, Robert the Bruce gets a 6.0 on the BBA scale. Leave your angry comment below. I'm James Naughton. This is your Better Beer Authority. Better Beer Authority.